Hey YouTube, we're back with the L39 by Force RC. <laughs> I don't know, in one of the videos I said rock. I don't know why I said that. Um, Cloud9, L39, Albatross. Uh, where we left off, we had just put on the XT60. And we have this being the elevator servo. This being the rudder that we added here servo and then this being the throttle channel and so I'd start with this this has this nasty little tab on there I don't need this to be cut off on my uh, plane but I'll show you how to do it or how I normally do it that's all that's pretty much it sometimes you gotta trim them just a little bit further back um, but you can usually take and do it with uh, an X-Acto knife. Just ride the side of the blade along and trim. Very simple. And then that'll slide into a Spectrum receiver without having that tab in the way. Um, okay, great. So what we're going to do now, we have the, the rudder done except for cosmetics, which is going to consist of probably wiping this down and covering it up with either red paint or red piece of tape. As you can see, we've already got the linkage on there. Everything is solid, I think, now. Looks like we have maybe some bad penetration of glue there. But I think we're okay. The vertical stabilizer is not as square as I would like it to be. And that really that irritates me because it's not something that I can necessarily real easily fix. Other than just bending it. So I'm like having to just bend it. Okay, so my next maneuver is going to consist of mounting the wing or getting the receiver wired up but in order to do that I kind of need to have these wires pass through so I suppose we pretty much need to mount the wing I'm gonna put the canopy on just to kind of hold things steady and not have those wires pop out this canopy is pretty easy to pull off usually I like to put little tape tabs like this to help lift it off but it's so easy to get a hold of this I don't think it's gonna be a problem on this plane so um, my initial thoughts were I just need to make sure I don't get anything tangled up. You can sort of see this wire was a little bit tangled, so we'll get that untangled. And we'll pass that back up there. And then these two leads um, usually doesn't really matter which one's which, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make a mark on one of them. which this would be the right side, so maybe we can mark it with an R. Of course it's hard to see the R. Yeah, it's hard to tell what it is. And then this will be the left. We'll see if that one looks better. Yeah, that's kind of hard to tell what it is, so probably what I'll do is I'll just leave it unmarked. And it really honestly doesn't matter not in a flap around configuration or an aileron configuration. Okay, so you see how there's a single piece here that's going to go down there. So I want to dry fit this and just make sure I'm not going to have issues before we start gluing things because we, we are going to be gluing this obviously. I far prefer to have a bolt on wing but um, whatever. So I had um, a guy like I was telling you about on my channel just earlier tonight and he was on a tirade it was really weird and um, don't really exactly understand the draw to being a YouTube troll but if you've been doing this for a while you've had one and it's very weird because they care a lot about being 
total jerks, but they, they don't really make a lot of sense. So, oh man, that thing looks gorgeous. So anyway, he became my next blocky. Don't have too many of them, but I do have a few. Okay, first thing I learned about that, and I'm glad I learned it now and not later, is that those leads are maybe just a little bit short. And while I could probably um, get my extension cords on there, it's going to be a lot harder once everything is kind of in place. So why don't we just be proactive? We'll go ahead and get some extension cords going. We don't need a lot of extension cord though. So I think I'll go with... I have these labeled different ways, short male to female. Yeah, that should work. So male to female, I don't really need to explain this, but for those of you who are new to the hobby, just uh, imagine how males and females connect, and you'll get it. All right, so that should be probably about right. That'll get us out to midway out, and really, if you just look at whatever the shortest lead is for the other connection points that would be satisfactory um, keeping in mind that I'm to be using a stabilizer uh, Lemon RX 7 channel with stabilization and so really that stabilizer the closer to CG the better you don't have to actually have it on the CG but it isn't you know it's generally a good rule of thumb um, but I mean you can really put it wherever and the nose is solid so by the time you have that pack in here, let's just look at this for spatial consideration. Now the center of gravity, real quick, is at 50 centimeters back, or not 50 centimeters, 50 millimeters back. Yeah, 50 millimeters back from the leading edge. So, grab my calipers. Okay, so 50, cent 50 millimeters back. Okay, so that's 50 millimeters back from the leading edge. Which, uh, just to kind of give us a ballpark of how far off we're going to be, I'm going to loose this in here. Obviously, the receiver is not in there, which is going to make a difference. So centimeters, 50 centi or 50 millimeters back would be kind of right underneath. And of course, I'll mark it. You can see we're already nose heavy, which is great. That's what I was hoping for because I have the battery all the way forward. So let's put it back just partially and see how bad. Like if we go right to the edge where the servo is, let's see how far off we are now. Okay, so putting my fingers back. Eh, not perfect. Gosh, I can't imagine. It'd been probably really struggling if I didn't have this extra weight back here. Okay, so that's fine. The other thing is the uh, receiver is going to be as close to the center of gravity as possible. So that'll be something for our consideration is to just try to keep things as close as, as we can make them to that side there. I should probably go ahead and pull this wing down. Okay. So now we need to extend these leads. I might have a little bit longer servo extension. Let's see if we have a little longer servo extension. Um, this might be on the edge of too short. I know I've got way longer. Those are way longer. Male to female long extensions. These are Y cables. Those are male to female servo extensions, medium. Okay, medium might be a little better. I think we'll go with these. Yeah, that's a little bit better. That'll be closer to what our shortest wire is. Now, even if we end up tying up excess, I can replace these with the shorter ones later. And it won't hurt anything because I can still get at them. But I am going to be cognizant and 
probably go ahead and do a little hot glue so we'll get that fired up right now. Okay, so these short ones can go back in here and you'll see I just label the bags because it is really hard to differentiate when they're in the bags. Again, guys, I tell you a lot of these little details because obviously watching these build videos, there's just lots of little things that you guys probably already do that I do and vice versa. I could learn from you. So I hope that it's not just completely boring suppose if it was boring you probably wouldn't be watching okay so this just make sure the black and the brown line up that'll ensure that we have the correct connection on the signal line and the ground line and the powers in the middle so you could hook it up either way of course the connector should prevent that by being keyed in the correct orientation Okay, so once this thing heats up, then we'll go ahead and get a little bit of hot glue on there. I don't know why those got left there. Now my hope is to use a little something like this to hold and maintain the battery position. But I guess I'm not 100% sure if that's going to work or not. We'll just have to play it by ear for now. We can leave that at 50 getting warm okay so that's usually all I do I actually glue um, both sides and the only reason I do that is because I don't trust the connectors that come from the factory I'd rather just put a little bit of glue even though it shouldn't break shoulda woulda coulda right if you work with RC for more than five minutes you know that Lots of things that should be right are not right. Okay, so I'm just going to take these two wires and just kind of bank them up together like this. I really don't want to be fighting them here in a little bit when I've actually got glue and other different things to interact with. The other thing is I've been toying with the idea of using an epoxy to hold the wing onto the fuse. But then I come back and I think, ah, that's just probably overkill. I don't think we're going to glue that. That's not gluing very well. I don't think I care about that. If we use epoxy, then it would probably be a little bit stronger. But the pops in your hand, not in your mouth, that stuff works really nice for holding together stuff. Okay, so we're just going to slip this in here. Okay. So we'll just get that situated so it's somewhat centered and you kind of got to walk it back and forth to get the cables to like fall into that channel that they've prepared for us but it's really kind of difficult to tell for sure if those wires are where they need to be because there's no real delimination on the top there is on the wing but not on the fuse and I think that the carbon fiber spar is actually causing it not to want to sit down. I think. I think that's where my problem is. So it's really kind of a tough call right now. Do I go ahead and just glue it and get on with it? Or do I sit and try to figure out, you know, because that, it looks like they're in the channel, guys. And let's just have a little heart to heart. RC companies. Why didn't you just make it so we could screw this together? It'd be so much nicer. Well, whatever. It is what it is. Still a beautiful little plane. Real happy with the way it looks. 
Okay, so I got to make a decision on epoxy versus hot glue versus CA versus pops in your hand. I'm very much torn. One thing I really like about this plane is that it's white right here, which means I can tape it down when we're done. And that will help to ensure that we don't have any issues with uh, with paint coming off. <laughs> I just don't know exactly how to get these stupid wires to not fall on top of each other like this. I think I'm gonna have to, I wonder if I maybe I'm gonna have to glue them down to get them to stay in position. Or maybe they just used bigger wires than the manufacturer's spec. When Force RC took this model from Great Plains or wherever they got it from. Hmm. I hope I'm not the only guy that has this problem. Very difficult to tell though, guys. I'm always nervous about screwing up this step because you don't get a second chance on this particular step. But every time I lift, everything looks good. I think we're just going to glue it and be done with it. I think it's going to be fine. I think we'll just use the pops in your hand, not in your mouth. And uh, we'll, we'll make it work. Hot glue is still warm if we would need it. Okay, so we need something to spread the glue with a little bit. And Q-tips do work. But this Q-tips, this is probably not one of Q-tips strongest applications, if I must say myself. Okay, so now I want to glue, but I want to make sure I glue it in such a way that I don't get glue all over everything that's not supposed to receive glue. So I especially want to get glue up into this the ultrasonic welds on this um, these packages of glue from Hobby King are what failed the day that it popped into my hand so you'll want to be careful to try to avoid getting a condition where that's going to happen to you and the bottom is where it failed on on that tube so I'm kind of trying to support it a little bit more back here. I was able to tape up the, the tube and I used the rest of it. What didn't get spilled out right then. It worked fine. So it was just a mess, a huge mess. Okay, you can see how hard I'm squeezing this thing. And I don't mean to sound braggadocious, but people say I have kind of a death grip because of... Uh, dragging test weights around all the time like when I shake hands or whatever so if I have a death grip and this thing is hard for me to squeeze then that means that somebody's probably going to struggle to get get the glue to flow now I'm going to wait and not glue that area there I'll just spread a little bit over there in a minute Okay. Okay. That's glued quite a bit. So now let's cap it off. So now spreading it just to make sure that it actually sticks down somewhere. Because you don't want just that one thin row of contact point you want to maximize the contact area and especially up here on these little lips that you can't use the bottle to spread it onto okay so we got that spread well all right so dang it of course i'm touching it with my thumb immediately that didn't take all but three seconds and you would think the stuff would rub off like a uh, rubber cement the trouble is if you don't get it right away, it doesn't. 
and then it gets really difficult to get out of there. Okay, so these two wires here and here are the two I have to pull up. Okay, so I've done that now. So now I just need to try to seat this into the keys. Okay, I can't help but feel like it's not sitting down because I've mismatched something. I'm not sure what it would be exactly, but I'm just going to tug on the wires individually and see if uh, see if it allows me to get a better seat. Okay, now I'm going to pull the wing intentionally apart and just look. That actually is good good when you're using this type of glue too, by the way. If I could, I would peel it off and spin it around 180 degrees and do that a couple of times. It makes it super strong. See, and normally you would say, well, with a, a bond like this, that would have been a good, good place for epoxy. Well, I found the exact contrary. It's extremely hard to hold the pieces together because you can't clamp it together very easily. I mean, you can take a big, huge piece of foam and kind of squish it together, but this is not a very strong, um, you know, media to work with. So you can't just stick, uh, you know, like a wood clamp, like one of these wood clamps on there. That was one of the biggest issues I had with the Airbus when I was gluing the wings together. And I did use epoxy on that. But now look, if I try to pull this back, It'll barely come apart, which is what you want. See? It'll come apart, but just barely. Dang it. Feels solid. It's nice and straight. You don't have to worry about it, you know, walking from squareness. Okay, so now that we got those wires in a safe spot, I'm going to stick them back in there with the canopy to hold. Maybe I can try to clamp this somehow. Because it seems to be taking well to my hand pressure. It's just I'm not sure if I'm going to end up squishing something. Just trying to spread out my pressure as much as possible. It's looking really pretty reasonably decent. It looks really awesome actually. But the wing part is what I'm talking about. Okay, well... There is one other thing that's nice about this glue, and that is, if it doesn't work well, then you can probably peel it apart really slowly, almost like peeling a sticker off of a shirt. Um, but it's going to take material with it. You have to be prepared for that. That is so cool looking. Finally, some decent pilots, too. That's awesome. Um... I'd really like to get some more glue into that spot there because it seems to be a spot that's not glued enough. All right. So, what's next, guys? We're at 24 minutes. Okay, so we've got uh, a couple other things to do. Receiver. We've got to get that thing taped over. battery wiring obviously the wiring needs to be cleaned up now we may find out those extension cords are totally useless now we may not need them at all but I kind of doubt it it's really close see and that's another servo extension that's been added on to the electronic speed control looks like why don't we just go ahead and grab the receiver and we'll plug it in and 
and see how far off we are. I'm going to turn on the transmitter, throttle cuts on. This will be the first time we've actually energized anything in this plane itself other than the rudder. So this is the elevator. One of the ailerons needs to go into the aileron port. The other of the ailerons needs to go into the auxiliary one. And then, by the way, auxiliary two is the bind plug. And then this is the rudder. So where's the rudder? Okay, there's the rudder. So we need to get this in there. The gear switch, incidentally, um, the gear channel does work, but it changes condition, and um, it also is the stabilizer on-off condition, which, guy, by the way, guys, at Lemon, if you're listening, make that so that we can flip a switch or something, because I want that channel back, and then I'll use the top-end channel, I'll use the master gain to actually act as an on-off. But I understand why they did five, because that way people with a five-channel radio can do it. Okay, so this is throttle. I think that's throttle, yeah. Okay, so that's the second set of pins over. Okay, blacks are down. Orange and whites are up. Okay, so we should be set. So now we can go ahead and plug this in. Okay. Be nice to your antenna. Your antennae. Why is it buzzing so much? Or if it's because the fact that it's laying down on a pillow like that. That's the rudder. Okay, might as well just kind of lay this flat. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Oh, got to switch the elevator. Okay, up, down. Rudder's backward also. Okay, rudder. Rudder, elevator, elevator, aileron, aileron. Okay, so now I need to double check the wing while the glue is still kind of working a little bit. Just kind of pushing it up. Do the same thing every time you pick it up for a few hours. That is if you're still working with it in a few hours. Okay, look at the elevator. Got a lot up up on it right now. Probably go ahead and adjust that shortly. Okay, so flap rons. We're gonna turn it on to switch B, which this is switch B here. Oh, cool. So we'll just go. 50 and 100. Okay, so there's your 100. Well, that's weird. The one moves quite a bit more. I think it's just a trimming issue right now. And if I recall, these ones are going to be I don't remember if there's even a mechanical adjustment. Yeah, there's a screw that can be changed. And you can bring them down. Okay, so all the axes are going in the right direction. I want to get this super small screwdriver. We are about out of time on this video. What we're going to do is we're going to activate flap rons. Um, well, let's do this. Gear. Gear's not making any change there. The other thing is I want to do 
do a one second deployment. So it just takes one second to full throw. System setup, yes. Channel assign. Looks like auxiliary three is already set up to do that. That's master gain. And then gear, I want gear set to switch D in my case, okay? That's where I like my stabilizer to be turned on and off. But for whatever reason, oh, because you have to flip one of these things first. Okay, flop rounds. VTEL and Delta. See, now it's working. Okay. So basically, if you don't need VTEL or Delta, you just flip them both down. That activates the possibility of having stabilizer on and off. Okay. So now we have to figure out do we have the axis right? Up? Nope. Correct, correct, up, 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 up. Okay, so elevator needs to be switched. So we go to the elevator one and we flip that from the off to the on. Now watch the elevator. Up, down, up, down, up, down.